Hi everyone, welcome to Intavi in a Books, a channel where I, Intavi, talk about all my books and all my bookish things. So I'm back today with another video. However, before we get into the actual video, three things. Number one, I painted my nails yesterday, so they look a bit messy. Um, I decided last year at some point that I would stop going to get my nails done because I hate the experience. I hate somebody touching my hands. I hate how they push back the cuticles. Um, I hate that when it's all well, it's all done, I have to go back and I have to have somebody remove something from my nails and it just feels like they're taking so much of my nail that I still need. So I decided to stop doing that and last night on a whim I decided to just paint my own nails for no reason other than the fact that I have nail polish and I was on the couch bored. Number two, I'm sorry if you missed my video last week. Um, I did post a video. It was a video about my life in books or the books that have defined my life so far. And after I put it up, um, I took it down and I just left it on private because I just wasn't happy with how the video came out. I didn't like the quality. I didn't like how I sounded. I didn't like what I was saying just because I, I thought it was a really big video like these are the books that I believe have defined me and I just didn't like how I articulated how they've defined me. I really do believe what I was saying in that video but I just felt it was too big a video for me to just leave something that I wasn't happy with out it on the internet um, so I took that video down so there was no video last week um, so technically already failing on my goals um, and then number three this is my second attempt at filming this video I did it yesterday but um, it was just so out of focus and I was I'm, I was trying to shoot a video where I was sitting on the couch, so I'm sitting like a little far back. And because of my eyesight, <laughs> I can't see when I'm out of I'm out of focus. So I just couldn't see what was going on. And then I went to go edit it, and like everything was was unusable. So I'm back today early in the morning before I did anything else and I'm sitting and I'm filming this video. With all of that being said though, um, so this is my birthday book haul. My birthday has come and gone. I am officially a 34 year old lady. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the number 34. 33, 3 is my favorite number, it is 2 threes. had a nice ring to it. 35, I love an odd number, so I know I'm going to love that. 34 just sound, kind of feels like I'm waiting for 35. Um, but I'm hoping that the year, actual year of 34 will be good. Lots of things to look forward to, particularly from my family's perspective, because my little sister is in the final year of high school. So really excited about that. I don't know. I, I just, I'm just, I remember having a really good time in my final year of high school just because I could see the light I could see that it was over I'm not I wasn't really an outgoing kid I wasn't out having lots of fun but I could see the end and like the studying felt a lot like you're studying for something that you could see you know all those years you're studying to get to the next grade but when you're studying in your final year in high school it sort of feels like you're studying for your life like this is it the grades or the marks that you get this year are going to just dictate what happens to you for the rest of your life that's what it felt like then of course now i know that's not true you can always like course correct right so if my little sister's watching this you can always course correct if anybody in their final year in high school is watching this you can always course correct today's video though is about my birthday book haul um i took my birthday off it was the 26th and it was a friday i decided to take the day off i decided to take myself out i went to the bookshop around where i live so the cube bookshop i couldn't find the books that i wanted um i tried going to the library and then i found out that they don't open on fridays must be nice so um couldn't find anything there um and then i went to the waterstones in richmond and i found I think I, I pulled three books from there, so I did find some books, well, only two of those are books on my list, but I did find some books when I got there, and then I took myself off for brunch, read my book, and then I went to uh, another Waterstones in Chiswick, and I found the final book, the book that I was like, I'm not coming home without this book. I had two of the, I had two such books, and I came back home with them. So, all in all, a great book shopping day. Um, so, let us get into the books that I actually got. I, like I said, I got five books. Um, I went out with a list of six books, I got five books, and two of those books are non-fiction, and then the other ones are 
fiction again i do want to read more non-fiction this year so i am pushing myself like to make sure that i have a bit of a balance as i'm going through my reading yeah the first book that i got was actually i got it on my kindle um and it's a memoir called how i say babylon by safia sinclair the reason why i got the memoir on my kindle is because i just realized that that's my favorite way to sort of ingest memoirs i just really love being able to just taking the information digitally, highlight what I like, and then if I really do love the memoir, then I try my best to get a physical copy and go back and highlight those paragraphs or those passages that I really enjoyed. So I decided to do that with Sophia Sinclair's memoir, which I think is going to be a brilliant um, read, just based on what I've seen on the internet, based on what I've seen on Bookstagram. It just sounds like a story worth reading about. So the blurb on the back of the book or what I could find on Waterstones on the Waterstones website. Uh, born in Montego Bay, Jamaica, where luxury hotels line pristine white sands, beaches, Sophia Sinclair grew up guarding herself against, against an ever-present threat. The preaching fire and brimstone, her father, a volatile reggae musician and strict believer in a militant sect of Rastafari, rallied against Babylon, the immoral corruption of the Western world just beyond their gate. To protect the purity of the women in their family, he forbade almost everything. No trousers, no short sleeves, and no skirts. No opinions, no way but home and school, no friends, but this family and no future but this path. So I just was really keen on reading it after actually reading what the book is about but i've just seen such good things being said about this book so i just thought i should pick this one up again not a physical copy but i don't want to cheat and say i got less books than i did because one of them is digital because that still counts the next book is actually a physical book but it's also another non-fiction and that book is say nothing a true story of murder and memory in northern ireland and this book is by patrick redden keith he is a new york times bestseller he is a journalist he wrote he's written a few books but his most popular one that i know of anyway is empire of pain which follows the secular family and the bringing of our prescription drugs which have, have has led to the opioid crisis in america and i wanted to read that book when it was popular which was last year if, if memory serves me correctly but i decided not to because yeah I decided not to because I watched so many documentaries and so many TV shows and so many movies about the actual thing that I thought if I read the book almost immediately, it would sort of be like a, a questioning, but in the wrong sort of direction. It would be, well, what's actually true? Because obviously I expect a lot of fabrication on television, but I just thought, you know, it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't the time for me to read it. And then I found out that, uh, he has also written a book about, uh, the history of in Northern Ireland and I have been curious about the country since I went to Dublin last year just because I, I it's sorry Dublin is not in Northern Ireland that's not there but I just couldn't understand how it came to be two parts and what actually happened and I've just been so curious about it we read a book me and both me and my husband read a book about actually about Ireland right but it didn't say anything about Northern Ireland um, or that I can remember anything that was memorable. And then I heard about this book and how he goes about telling the history of the country through murder, murders that actually happened and kidnappings that happened. I thought it'd be really interesting to just see how he, t he tries to weave that together. And then I started reading it on my Kindle and I thought, mm, okay, there's pictures in here and I need to make notes and I need to actually see what the pictures are. So I decided to get a popular, uh, to get a, uh, a, what, a, a physical copy. So if I just read what it says on the back, it says, on the night, uh, one night in December 1972, Jean McCornville, a mother of 10, was abducted from her home in Belfast and never seen alive again. Her disappearance will haunt her orphan children, the perpetrators of the brutal crime, and a whole society in Northern Ireland. Uh, through the unsolved case of Jean McConville's abduction, Patrick 
Radham Keith tells a larger story of the troubles investigating Dolores Price, um, the first woman to join the IRA who bombed the Old Bailey, Gary Adams, the politician who helped and the fight who helped end the fighting uh, but denied his IRA pass, and Brendan Hughes, an IRA commander who broke their code of silence. An unforgettable story forensically reported. Say nothing explores the extremes the extremes people go to for an ideal and the way societies mend or don't after a long and bloody conflict. It sounds really interesting just reading the back of the book and I just thought it'd be an interesting way to read about this country. And I actually don't read a lot of books like this, right? So I, I just wanted to challenge myself to see whether or not I could get through it and whether I would enjoy it. When the woman at Waterstones handed it to me, I remember saying, oh my God, that is chunky. <laughs> And it was funny because I've obviously read thicker books than this, but just the thought of reading a book um, like this, about this, that is so thick sort of threw me off. Uh, but I mean, most of, the, this, most of this part is like just references. So hopefully I can get through this. So that's my second book that I got. The third book that I got um, is Osamu Desire's No Longer Human. I... This one was the one that wasn't on my list, but I was really intrigued by this book because when we went to water, when we went book shopping at some point in November or December, I read the first page of this book and I was I was already pulled in. But you know, I, I was like, you don't know anything about this book, just just put it down and walk away. And so I put it down and I walked away. And since then, I found out that this book, uh, No Longer Human, by uh, is by a Japanese author, author Osamu Desai. Uh, it was originally published in Japanese in 1948, and then it was published ten, and it was translated ten years later and published in English in 1958. It's semi-autobiographical, and it was published a month after the author took his own life at 38 years old. And just the history of that just made it even more fascinating to me. Um, and then on the back, it says, portraying himself as a failure, the protagonist of a Sami desire is no longer human, narrates a seemingly normal life, even while he feels himself incapable of understanding human beings. All by Yozo's attempts to reconcile himself to the world around him begin in early childhood, continue through high school, where he becomes a clown to mask his alienation, and eventually le leads to a failed attempt at taking his own life as an adult. Without sentimentality, he records the casual cruelties of life and his fleeting moments of human connection and tenderness. This, I mean, this just sounds so interesting as a concept, as a book, and I believe the book is written like in like notebooks or note entries. So I'm really keen on reading this one. It, it, it's just, the fact that it's an old book makes it even more fascinating to me because I'm on this journey to try read old books. The fact that it's Japanese also draws me into it because one of the things that I've always liked about Japanese writing is their ability to sort of pierce through the layers of humanity and ask really important questions that were just lying under the bed of everything and they just pierce through it and they're like these are the questions that I want to ask about what we've deemed as normal what we've deemed as life um so all the Japanese books that I've read so far have sort of lended themselves to that like that questioning and that, that exploration of what it is to be a human what it is to be a person what it is to exist in society but they've been relatively modern books as well so I just thought it'd be interesting to read about something that happened well the same principles back in 1948 and yeah so i'm really looking forward to this this is going to be like a priority read for me for feb the fourth book that i got which is one of the two books that i was not going home without um this is the book that actually made me go to the third bookshop is Juno Loves Lakes by Carl Geary i first heard about this book over on scott's uh page on gunpowder fiction and plot and it just sounded like such a fascinating read it just sounded like a book about friendship and I've been craving a lot of books around friendship. This book is by Irish author Carl Geary and I don't know anything about Carl, about Carl Geary other than the fact that he's Irish and this is his second book and I, I'm hoping that I love Juno Lovesick so much that I'll want to get the first book that they have published. Um, 
And then the book itself, the synopsis read, Gina loves legs. Uh, she always has ever since she fought the bullies for him in their first encounter in school. Growing up on their estate is tough for both of them, but as they emerge into the possibilities and underground parties of 1980s Dublin, they find a breathing space to begin their real lives. The two of them against the world. But what if the world has other ideas? I was just really interested in this book. Um, since reading... Um, Elena Ferrante's Neapolitan Quartet, I just have been fascinated about friendships and how they form and reading stories about that. And I just have also been fascinated about the day-to-day -day lives of like regular people living regular existences, you know, like people who don't have a lot, but they're just carrying on with their lives and they are not African because those are the books that I grew up reading so I just wanted to I'm just delving into this genre of a different type of people who live hard lives that are gripped with suffering and just finding out exactly what the day-to-day -day is that's 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 why I was fascinated by this book I am also also priority list for January for February really really I'm really looking forward to Juno Love Legs. I really searched high and low for it. Um, the next book that I have, or the last book that I got, was Stillborn by Guadalupe Natal. This is apparently Guadalupe Natal's fourth book, and I had no idea who she was, and now I need to read everything she's written. But this is her fourth book, uh, originally written in... It was originally written in Spanish and has been translated um, because she is a Mexican writer. Um, so... This is the fourth book and I am really, really keen on this. Um, basically the synopsis is, it's stillborn, is set in Mexico and follows the lives of Laura and Alina, best friends with a shared aversion to the human shackles of motherhood. In their mid-thirties, however, things change when Laura undergoes a sterilization as a, gen as, gen as a genuine inoculation against societal pressure and Alina finds herself intensely drawn to motherhood. When she finally draws, when she finally falls pregnant, medical complications arise, and with them, emotional and ethical boundaries of the of the most devastating kind. So I am really drawn into this book because I'm just at a phase of my life where these questions have become incredibly real. <laughs> you know, I think in your twenties, it's I'm not saying it's easy to say I never want to have children or I never want to become a mother but I think when you get into your 30s you sort of solidify into one camp or another and I think the reason you do that is because society is just even though there are more and more women choosing not to have children I think when you enter your 30s society just that's all they want to know about you so like it's one of those things where you have to sort of solidify your place like where which which side are you going to be and i think there is also this pressure with uh, society to say well the mothers hang out with the mothers and the non-mothers have an aversion to you they don't want to hang out with you so they hang out by themselves you, both of you these two camps dislike each other and i just thought it would be interesting to read a story about two best friends who one they had the same they had the same understanding about motherhood and the same aversion and one of them decided to flip over and go the other route and i just thought it'd be interesting to read about them still remaining friends and how they actually show up in each other's lives and i am i i, I just i reached part two yesterday so i reached part two yesterday and i think you can see that but I'm like about a hundred pages in, which is about halfway of this book. And I think the book took a turn that I didn't see coming. I didn't realize that there would be medical complications. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that I hadn't read the blurb on the back. I just knew that this is a book that felt like something I needed to read. And now that I'm in it, I can 100% guarantee I was right. I know myself so well. I was right. It is so good. The writing is so good. I think it's going to be one of my top reads of the year. Um, but hopefully I can talk about it more in my Jan wrap up when I finish this book. Because I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, so those are the books that I bought. And then on a whim, like just as I was about to head out, I decided to buy this, which is New Philosopher. I... I've been wanting to read more, I think I said this in my goals video as well, I wanted to read more literary type of articles and I, I've been trying to read them on my phone and my iPad but it's really hard for me to focus on my phone because then I just think, what's my mom up to and then I just go on WhatsApp and I just end up sending her pictures of my dog that she'd seen like a hundred times before. I just on a whim picked this up and this issue 
tackles um, like loss, different types of losses. And I just thought it'd be really interesting and I would really enjoy it um, because the topic of loss is one that I'm always keen on reading about. And yeah, so that, that's what I got from my little birthday excursion. And I've read two articles in the philosopher, in the new philosopher already and I'm really enjoying it. So I think I'm gonna read more um, at some point today. But that's what I have. Those are the books that I got and I am really excited about all of them. It, I think the intentionality of stopping to buy books, but I think for me the big shift is stopping to buy books online because I think I don't see it the same as when I go into a shop. If I went into a shop and I bought 10 books at a time, like that would be odd right I would you wouldn't do that because it's like what do you mean you're buying 10 books right now you can you even carry 10 books but when they're brought to you in the house it feels a little different so I think the intentionality of going into a bookshop browsing and when you, when I don't find a book that I want just like pulling up my phone and be like can you find this um is is a, is a new layer and I'm really enjoying that with that being said though I will not be buying any more books until July no until not until August now, because technically six months starts on the 27th of Jan. So until August. So this is it. Book by man. Back on. Um, but yeah, those are the books that I've bought. Um, again, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here with me. I'm really sorry about last week's video. I just wasn't happy with it. I hope I'm happy with this one. Jeez. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. And as usual, remember to be kinder than you think is necessary. Bye.